Hello everyone and welcome to our video on using ChatGPT to create malware. Obviously this is just a proof of concept for educational purposes. The idea is to understand how this works. I mean people are out there doing this in the real world. And as security engineers we need to know what the bad guys are doing so that we can stop it before they use these types of things to attack us. And the real thing I want to help you understand is how a simple tool like this can help someone who isn't necessarily that strong technically very quickly create effective tools. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So we're just gonna imagine that someone is on AWS, uh, uh, somebody has an AWS account, we have infected them with malware and we want the malware, the payload of the malware should steal their AWS credentials. Okay, so first we're gonna need them to send the AWS credentials to a server we control. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need to have a way to send the data to our server, right? So before I ask you about AWS credentials, which will make ChatGPT get suspicious, uh, like, oh, you want credentials and you want to send them, I'm just going to ask it, how do I send two variables to an API on a Tor hidden service, they're called onion services now, with Python? Because we're going to send the data from the credentials um, over a Tor hidden service because that would allow us to send it anonymously. So first we just want to see how we're even going to send the data over there and then we'll actually grab the data. <clears throat> okay, so it's just using normal post with uh, the request library, but it uses socks to set a proxy. <clears throat> Very good. So set up the proxy, da 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 We get the onion service. So we'll put that code here. So we just need to change this data to be the secret, to be the access and secret key for an AWS account. So now we're going to ask it, where are AWS credentials located? How do I access AWS credentials on Mac OS in Python? So we use Boto3, we need to install it, configure it. Okay, we'll put that inside of, that's, that's the file we would need to open, by the way. And then it's gonna give us the part we really want, which is the Python code. <coughs> okay, so it tells us how to do it. We just use this little bit of code. Um, please give me the code above in one chunk plus the code to print the access and secret keys. Certainly, it's great. Okay, so it's gonna give me the same code and now it will give me the access and secret keys. And that's all we really want. So it's gonna give me more code to do something simple in S3, but we don't really care about so I'll just tell it to stop, and we'll add that to our script. Pim. So I'll say, just I noticed a little bit of redundancy in this code that we call this twice. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And now we can just say credentials that access key and credentials that secret. There we go. And now what we'll do is we will change variables one and two to be the secrets we want to send over Tor, which will be access key, secret key. <clears throat> and instead of variables, I'll call this access and this secret and your onion service address. Obviously we would have to have one, but this is the code. So we would just change this to be our onion address. It re realizes that it's an onion. And yeah, chat GPT just helped us write malware. I mean, it basically did all the work for us. I had to have some Python knowledge to know how to glue this stuff together, but long gone are the days of having to know about this, know about that. Even if you're not sure how to do it anonymously, you can ask ChatGPT, like, how can I send data over a network anonymously? It involves using some form of encryption. Here's a few methods that can be used, a VPN, 
Okay, kind of that, that's good to use Tor and it gives us Tor. So even if you didn't know about Tor, you're like, oh, well, you're a hacker, you know about Tor, you knew about this. Yeah, but I could have found out about that from ChatGPT and then I could have been like, how do I use Tor in, you know, if I was using Java, say Java, you can use the Tor Socks library and here's an example of how to use it. it. Tells you where to get it and it tells you exactly what class to use and so on and so forth. So it's a powerful tool. It's gonna to change the way that hackers are doing things. Most black hats are already relatively low skill compared to their, um, compared to their non-criminal counterparts. Uh, I feel like this tool is exactly what people like that are gonna need in order to make more complex software more cheaply, which is bad news for us, but good news if we learn about it and find ways to mitigate this kind of stuff. This is just to show you what they're doing, what things are likely going on, how it works. Uh, if you go, if you do any like dark web intelligence on, on illicit, you know, like hacker forums or things to try to find out what people are discussing, you'll see that these technologies are being hotly discussed. So it's extremely relevant and that is a simple view into how it works. Thank you so much for your time and goodbye.